Hey guys, it's Jeremy. Today I'm gonna to show you how to replace your DIY ductless mini split inside unit. I installed this guy a year ago, it broke. I filed a warranty claim, I got another one. I installed it, I'm gonna show you how I did it, stick around. So a few months back, I started having problems with this mini split not blowing cool air upstairs in my loft. If you've watched my previous video on a Mr. Cool DIY mini split installation, that was actually done downstairs in this building in my workshop. I installed the unit that you see behind me in October of 2016. I called the manufacturer, which is Mr. Cool, and explained to them the problem that I was having. I went through all of the troubleshooting steps and there was really no way to diagnose it over the phone. So they recommended that I call my local HVAC professional that has mini split experience. So I did that. He came over to my home and clearly saw that the mini split was low on Freon. He went ahead and he added Freon. So it worked really well for two months. I had no issues. It was blowing cold air. And about two weeks ago, I started experiencing problems again that it was blowing warm air. So I called the same HVAC professional that I had called the first time to come and to diagnose the problem. And when he came over, he said that um, the mini split was essentially in a vacuum, which means that it had lost all of its refrigerant. He was here for about two hours trying to find a leak. Um, he has all of the fancy type of gadgets that you can possibly think of to try to find the leak. The only thing that we can think of is that it was in the line somewhere. Um, but we checked the unit in here, which is why I have the cover off. We checked the outside condenser unit. We took it all apart, or he, he took it all apart. And he was trying to find a leak and we just really could not find a leak. Filled it with more refrigerant to um, see if we can find it then and we still weren't able to find it. So to make a long story short, I called the manufacturer, which is Mr. Cool, explained to them the problem that I was having, explained to them that I had called an HVAC professional to my home twice, provided them with the receipts and the write-up from my HVAC professional, and they were kind enough to send me a brand new indoor unit per their warranty. They didn't give me any problems, no hassles. They just wanted to know that a professional had properly gone through the troubleshooting steps to essentially diagnose the problem with my mini split. The current one is on. It is currently blowing cool air, but it's um, not gonna blow cool air for long because of the refrigerant leak. So what I'm gonna do is go outside, I'm gonna turn off the valves, which essentially um, is going to prevent the refrigerant inside the unit from leaking out while I make the disconnects of the uh, two connections that actually go into it. I have to take this unit down and I'm gonna have to pull it to where I can get it on the ground and then I have to pull the pipe, all of the refrigerant pipe out of the wall. Um, and this is a pretty long run. I'm on the second floor of my shop. It goes through this wall, through my stairway, um, out the exterior wall and all the way down about 20 feet. And then put the new one on the same brackets that I already have installed here. And then run those lines out. So I'm gonna take you through this. I hope you learned something. Hope you get something out of it. Um, All right, so as you can see, here are my two units. The video that I did a few months ago was on the far unit. That's for my downstairs workshop. The one that I'm having problems with is the first unit that I installed, which is right here. So I have disconnected the electrical line that runs from the indoor unit to the outdoor unit and pulled off the cover so I can proceed to disconnect the refrigerant lines. All 
All right, so I'm really not a fan of heights, which is sort of ironic considering I'm 6'7". Um, I just don't like them, but I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna get my extension ladder, I'm gonna put it up here, and I have tie straps tying the drain hose into the refrigerant line bundle that I have to snip before I can proceed with bringing the line up inside. I don't wanna cut the line. Um, the folks at Mr. Cool told me to try to keep it intact as much as possible so I can ship it back to them. Presume that they wanna properly diagnose it, um, potentially improve some of their existing processes or what have you. So I'm gonna to get to it. So as a quick update for this unit, this unit is working flawlessly. I had my HVAC technician, while he was diagnosing the other mini split, he checked this one just to make sure that it was properly charged with refrigerant, it's cooling properly, cooling properly, and this thing is absolutely performing great. It does a really good job of keeping my workshop extremely cool while I'm in here, and um, that's why I bought it. And there's one thing I need to mention that I did not mention in the previous video when I actually installed this, is that I leave this running all the time. When I'm not in the shop, I'll set it to about 80 degrees and it has variable speeds, which means that when it needs to cool, it kicks up high until it gets it cool. When it reaches the predefined set temperature, then it'll kind of go into an idle mode, but it'll still extract the humidity out, which makes it much more pleasant to be in here. And it also prevents all of my tools from rusting. So I'm happy. It's not too bad for it being 100 degrees outside with 92% humidity. So it's working well, I'm happy with it. I am making a complete mess. So, I don't know if this must have been one of my genius moments. But anyway, I must have glued this on, I don't know. I used three inch PVC pipe to sit, to go through the wall while I routed my refrigerant lines through it. It's all fine, it's not a big deal. But I should have done a better job of getting the end cap for this. All I did was put a sleeve on it. I'm thinking it's probably all I had in my shop at the time. I don't know, but either way, stupid. So I'm gonna go run to Home Depot. I'm gonna get one of those round things to go on the end that has like a plate to sit flush with the wall. I don't even know what you call them but I know what they are and I know where they are in Home Depot. So I'm gonna go get that. I'll be back to finish this project up. Last thing about the warranty claim and Mr. Cool, I'm not receiving a dime from this company. This is not a paid sponsorship or an advertisement to get something for free. This is just my own personal experience with Mr. Cool. So the only thing I can find that was adequate to properly cover this hole is essentially this thing that goes at the bottom of a toilet. I don't know what they're called, but um, it'll work. It's not the prettiest, but it's better than the way that it looks now. So I'm going to put one on this side and I'm going to put one on the other side of the house where this is going to come out. I'm pretty lucky because there's 
a stud right on the side of this hole, so I'll be able to secure it pretty well. All right, so just as I reviewed in my last video, the items that come with the Mr. Cool DIY mini split. You got your quick setup guide, your user manual, installation manual, remote control user manual, and warranty information. Keep these handy because you may need to use them. Here's the Wi-Fi adapter that goes inside of your Mr. Cool DIY mini split. Remote control, two AAA batteries. The plug that goes in the bottom of the outdoor unit, I don't need this, so I'm gonna send this back with my old unit. Air filters, I'm gonna need that. And remote control holder, I do not need this because I'm gonna use my old one that's already screwed into the wall. An attachment right here that is for the wall mount, which I don't need because I already have mine up there, but I'm so I'm just gonna pull this one off, put it back in the box. It has all the lines that go to the outside unit. I'm gonna fish that through the wall, all the way down, mount this on the bracket that's already up on the wall, and go through the installation and setup procedure on it. As you can tell, I'm wringing wet. It is hot up here. It's August, the middle of August in South Louisiana. Um, if you're from South Louisiana, you know what I'm talking about. It is hot. So I'm gonna hurry and get this done. And all right, so I'm on my third shirt of this project. Hopefully this is gonna be the last time I have to change my shirt or else my wife's gonna kill me. So I'm having trouble getting this plug to fit in the drain hole over here. It's just a little bit flimsy. So I'm gonna put some uh, three in one oil on it. See if that'll help it a little bit. So I'm having some trouble getting this wire through this hole and through the PVC pipe. This is a very odd setup. This is not normally how you would run your duct work. However, this is the only option that I have for this room. The room is sort of a uh, trapezoid shape. That's odd that I said trapezoid because I was just doing homework with my daughter and we were doing trapezoids. It's probably the only reason why I know that this room is a trapezoid shape. But it's a trapezoid shape and um, there's no way for me to mount this unit on either wall because I have a little bit of attic space in between each wall and the outside and it's really low and I cannot mount it on that side because that is the front of the building and it would look kind of silly to have that just drop down in the front of the building. So this is my only option is to put it on this wall, but I have my stairway right here. I can't go through the ceiling with the refrigerant line because the refrigerant line has to drain down. So I can't, so it can't go up and then down. So my only option was to come straight from here, a cross, and then it hits the back of my shed or my workshop here, and then it drops down. This was my only option, so I had to do it this way. So I'm gonna use this little fish tape to get the drain hose where it needs to go. Horse. 
this install was a lot more difficult than what a normal install would be. I'm confident in saying that. There's no doubt about it. This was a very unique install. When I moved into this house, we had a um, three-ton unit, or a, I, don't, I don't even know what it was, but it was a central AC unit here in my shop. I had two vents in my loft, two vents in the workshop, and that condenser unit was just old. It didn't work, it was about to fall apart. I bought two of these mini splits for approximately $1,400 per mini split, a total of $2,800. I have two AC units that cool my area very nicely, upstairs and downstairs. If I were to buy a three ton unit or a four ton unit to do the same thing these two mini splits do, you do the math. I don't even know how much those cost nowadays to get installed. I guarantee you it's more than $2,800. I could be wrong, not an HVAC expert. All right guys, I appreciate you watching this video. I hope you learned something. I'm gonna put two videos right here. One is gonna be my DIY ductless mini split install video. I'm not even sure what the other one's gonna be. I'll decide when I edit the video. Please feel free to reach out to me. I appreciate you watching. Imagine, create, share. And it has variable speeds. And it has vari variable, and it has variable speeds.